Hi guys, welcome to this CSS Grid tutorial series once again. And today I'm going to talk about two properties, align self and align items. So let's get started. What I have here in CodePen is a grid container. And that grid container has nine grid items. So these grid items come in the form of divs, uh, div elements with the item class and uh, specific classes for each of them as well. Now in the style sheet here, I'm giving this CSS declaration display grid uh, to make my container a grid. And then I'm adding a gap of 1 em. I'm setting the template to three equally sized columns and automatic grid row sizes of 150 pixels minimum. Then uh, for each and every grid item, I'm giving them this nice uh, orange color, um, white text, uh, basic font family. But for the first time in this CSS series, I guess uh, you're going to see me use Flexbox. So this doesn't really matter for this video, but what I'm doing here is each of these boxes that you see, each of these nine boxes is going to be a flex uh, box and uh, I'm applying the justify content and align items properties to center the text inside of them. So today the, uh, the main topic is how can you align your boxes vertically inside your, your grid container. So I'm not talking about the text content, I'm talking about the whole box. So each of these nine boxes, how can you center them vertically, like uh, push them to the top, uh, to the bottom, or um, in the center, etc. So there is one property we are going to start with align self. And align self is what you should apply individually to your grid items. So let's pick um, item three. So it has a class of item three. And I'm going to use align self. And by default, this is the property. So whether you use the align self property or not, by default, it gets this stretch value. Okay, so by default, this is uh, the value that you get. Now I want to push this to the top. So I would write start. Now notice this, uh, the, the height of that box has now reduced and it has been moved to the top. So let me tell you what's happening here. The space allocated to that grid box is still intact. If I inspect this inside of Chrome, go here, this box currently is only 59 pixels in height, but the space of 150 pixels is still there because of what we specified here with grid other rows. Now, why is it 49 pixels? The 49 pixels come from the padding, 10 pixels padding on at the top and at the bottom, so 20 pixels in all, and then the font size of 1.5 em. So this um, also comes, uh, it is connected with the line heights. So check what happens. If I turn off the padding here, the size, the height has further reduced. I could go here and minimize the font size as well. If I made it 1.4, then the height of that element would further reduce. So my point here, let me um, revert, right. So my point here is that whenever you use align self, the height is gonna be determined by the contents of the grid item. And then the grid item is going to move wherever you tell it to. So right now it's moving at the top or at the start of the um, of the space allocated. I could say end and now it is switching to the bottom or I could also say center and now it is centered vertically. So keep in mind I am playing around with the box here not with the content inside the box. So by default it is stretch and you can see that it, there is no difference when I use the auto keywords or the normal keywords. Now you could do this with um, different grid items here because this align self is what you should apply individually to every grid item. So I could have here item four, align self and, and here item three, I wanted to start at the top. So I would have start and maybe the same thing for item eight and so on, you, you get the idea. 
So now let's say you wanted all your grid items to be aligned in the same way vertically. Uh, you could use another property which is align items. So align items, uh, that property you need to apply it to your container, not to your grid items. So notice here I have the container and I'm going to add align items. And now I can say start. Now, of course, some of the alignments are being overwritten by what we have here. So I'm going to clear this. Right. And now they are all starting at the top and they all have their heights controlled by their contents. I could say ends. They all move to the end. I could say center. And now they are all uh, vertically aligned in the center. So why is all that um, something that you should learn? Well, that is because you can do more advanced layouts. So let me give you one example. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to add a new div before the third item. So I'm going to say div class item because I want the default grid item styling. And I'm going to have another class called yellow item. And I'm going to have um, backgrounds. You will understand why I'm giving it that name. Okay, so now I want that yellow item to be yellow as well in the backgrounds. So I already have um, this CSS rule here. I'm going to uncomment it out. And it's just the background color that is the yellow color and the text color is going to be black. Okay, so now we have item one, two, backgrounds, and it continues, three, four, etc. Item nine has been pushed to a new row, which already has um, the height, minimum heights uh, defined here. If you don't understand any of this, make sure you check out my previous tutorials because we already covered all the properties I am using now. So now what I want to do if I scroll up I want item three to sit on top of my new background box here. In CSS Grid, it's possible to overlap items and um, make one item be behind or sit on top of another grid item. So that's what I want to do. And to achieve that, I'm going to um, make both of them start on the third grid line, which is this one here, and end on the fourth grid line that is uh, horizontally. Vertically, I want both of them to start on the first grid line and end on the second grid line. Again, I covered grid lines in previous tutorials from this series. So now, where is our yellow background? It's gone. It's not actually gone from the, uh, the layout. We just simply can't see it anymore because it is behind the uh, third item. And the reason why it is behind is because it comes before in the markup, in the HTML markup. If I had placed this after, then item three would be hidden because uh, the background elements or the um, the background box would come after, therefore it would sit on top of the uh, third item. But let me revert, this is how I have it. Now what I want to do, I want item three to be like the header of that background. So I want item three to start at the top and somewhere around here. And then I want the yellow background to show below it. So how could I achieve that? I simply have to scroll down here and I only need to use one property. So I'm going to say item three, align self, and then I want it to start. And there you have it. So both of them are having the same space in the grid container, but one of them is switching to the top, sitting on top of the one um, of the yellow box and making the yellow box appear uh, for the rest of the space or occupy the rest of the space. So if we inspect this, we inspect this, we can see they both uh, take the same space. One is on top of the other and align self is making all the difference, okay? So you could play around with such things and make more advanced layouts. I will make other tutorials in the future where I give you more ideas. But for now, uh, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you want to share any of your personal projects in the comment section.
give this video a thumbs up. I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.